Hello, this is Manish Salian once again, welcoming you to the first chapter of the last module of maths, and that is the module on speed and modern maths. And in this session, we are going to do the first chapter of this module, and that is time, speed, and distance. Now, if you are taking any aptitude test, then questions on speed, time and distance are very common, right? There are some tricks which we can use to solve these examples really fast. And that's going to be the purpose of this particular chapter. We are going to learn different concepts in this chapter. Let's understand which ones. The first thing that we are going to learn is the relationship between speed, time and distance, which we call as the proportionality of speed, time and distance. From there, we'll move on to the concept of average speed. Then, we'll do something called as the relative speed. Then, application of relative speeds, namely in races, and then in the last topic that is called clocks. Right? So, let's begin right away with the first part of the session, and that's the part on proportionality of speed, time, and distance. Before we begin, let us first understand what really is speed. For that, we'll first have to look at a vehicle which is moving at certain speed, right? This one. If you look at it, the vehicle has covered this distance. From this point, it has moved to this point. It must have taken some time to cover this distance, right? So speed is nothing but distance upon time, right? Simple. Speed is distance upon time which means all other variations are possible. Distance will be speed into time, right? And time will be distance upon speed, right? Those are all modified formulae from this. The main formula is speed is equal to distance upon time. What this means is, if you were to look at this formula carefully, what do you think is the relationship between speed and distance? Is it a direct relationship or a inverse? As you can see very clearly, speed and distance are directly proportional provided time is constant. What this means is, if you travel at a higher speed, then in the same amount of time, you are expected to cover a longer distance, am I right? And if you were to travel at a very slow speed, then in the same time, you are expected to cover a shorter distance. Right? So, speed and distance are directly proportional. What about speed and time? Look at the formula. Will you be able to figure that out? Speed and time are inversely proportional provided the distance is constant. Right? Speed is inversely proportional to time. What that means is, if the distance is constant, which means for traveling or covering a particular distance, at a higher speed, you are expected to take less time. Just common sense, right? If you are really in a hurry to travel the same distance, you jack up your speed, right? Which means you increase your speed so that you reach well in advance. On the other hand, if there is no time constraints, you are pretty relaxed enjoying your drive, right? <laughs> which means at a slow speed to cover the same distance, it will take much more time. Right? So, speed and time are inversely proportional. So, make sure you understand these three things very carefully. One, that formula up there, speed is equal to distance upon time. Second, speed and distance are directly proportional provided time is constant. And third, speed is inversely proportional to time provided distance is constant. Right? Okay. What this means is, if the speed changes in the ratio A is to B, what do you think? Time taken to cover the same distance would change in the ratio because speed and time are inversely proportional, right? So, if the speed changes in the ratio A is to B, time taken to cover the same distance will change in the ratio B is to A, right? What about the distance covered in the same amount of time? As you know, distance and speed are directly proportional. So, if speed changes in the ratio A is to B, distance covered will change in the same ratio, that is A is to B, right? Okay, so in simple terms, if the speed becomes half, that is 1 is to 2, 
Then time taken to cover the same distance will become double, 2 is to 1. And the distance traveled in the same amount of time would also be half. It is 1 by 2. Right? The ratio has to remain the same between distance and speed. Well, let's come to some conversions. Let me check. Do you know all these conversions really well? Okay. What are these conversions? Well, 1 from kilometers per hour to meters per second. Second one, from meter per second to kilometers per hour. And this one, 1 mile per hour is how many kilometers per hour? Do you know these values? 1 kilometer per hour is 5 by 18 meters per second. Right? What about 1 meter per second? Just the reverse, which means 18 by 5 kilometers per hour. Finally, how much do you think is 1 mile per hour equal to? How much is 1 mile in terms of kilometers? Well, it's 1.6, which means 1 mile per hour is 1.6 kilometers per hour. Right? These conversions are really handy, especially when the examiner gives you questions where there are two units used. Maybe kilometers, something is given in kilometers.